Welcome to Layers of Communication with your host, Lydia Taggart. Life presents experiences that add layers to who we are and how we see the world, affecting how we communicate. Lydia is here to take apart the layers and create new ways to connect and build relationships. So now, please welcome the host of Layers of Communication, your core boss, Lydia Taggart. Welcome to Layers of Communication. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and you're listening on TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. If you'd like to call in and join our conversation today, that number is 1-866-451-1451. Now, this is the, the pinnacle of all things everywhere. Any problem that you ever have, Today, we're going to get to the root of how to get around every single problem that you could ever possibly have. Okay, so imagine, like I know you have these situations in your life. Imagine that you have a person that you just cannot relate to. You can't figure out how to communicate with them. And it's driving you crazy because you can't just walk away. You have to deal with this person, right? So I had that situation with my son, as a mother, you can't just walk away from your kid. You have to figure out how to do it, right? My son, I, I know some of you know already that he has an autism form called Asperger's. It's very high functioning, but what that means is he has extreme high social anxiety and would rather not talk or be by people, if given the choice. As he's grown up and we've dealt with this and found more creative ways to communicate, we found you know, he really, really does want to communicate and interact with people. He just doesn't know how. So we have to get creative. And that's the layer of communication that we're going to discuss today, creativity. Now, I have a very creative daughter. When we think of creative, the first things that come to our mind usually are something like arts and dancing or music, all these different uh, creative kind of things to do, right? Well, I'm going to ask you to explore the idea that creativity is something more than just artwork. My daughter is very artistic, but there was a time that she could not express her needs. And we had to get creative in our communication. She had uh, gotten so sick and, and worried over school that she was actually making herself physically sick, not just mentally stressed out. She was, she was sick. And one day I said to her, and this was after she had asked Santa Claus to make her smarter. She had some issues and we didn't know what they were. But I said to her one day, if you will go to the rest of the school year and not complain about anything at all anymore, you'll just be happy and do your best. I will homeschool you next year. Oh my goodness, she was miraculously cured in an instant. Her stomach pains went away, her fever even went away, and she skipped off to school happy as could be because she was going to get to avoid this major stress. But she didn't realize being homeschooled, you still have to learn stuff, you still have to do stuff. But the difference, what was the difference? The difference was the way we communicated about it. We got a little bit creative and we found out what her needs were. We learned she has dyslexia. It wasn't just that she was left-handed and it wasn't just that she was the girl. We got five boys and one girl. It wasn't just that she was the only one with glasses. She had dyslexia. And I learned that that, um, that just means that your brain isn't interacting and integrating in the same way. So we went to this specialist to help her learn how to read and to teach me how to teach her how to read. And they had all sorts of fun things like learning how to make a letter with your whole body instead of just looking at it and trying to figure out, is that a D or a B or a P? And sometimes if, if the font is the same, it could be a Q depending on how you look at that circle with a line. And, um, using different ways to make it get into our brain, integrating all the different pieces if we had to get creative. And one of my favorite things that I ever heard her say, we had gone out to lunch after one of our classes with, with our teacher. 
And so we're standing at Subway in line and everybody's like looking at her. What is this kid doing here? Shouldn't she be in school? And so finally somebody stopped staring and actually said something about it and asked her, what are you doing out of school? And she says, well, I'm homeschooled. And she was just so proud of herself. And she says, my teacher didn't understand how to work with my brain. So we were learning a different way. And that's what we can do. We can be creative. And I invite you to explore this idea that being creative is not just a set of skills for art or talents. It's something we can learn and develop to be creative. And I invite you to think that maybe this idea of being creative is being open-minded, being open to new ideas. When we get older, they say that you get less creative. I think it's just we get stuck in our ways. You know, those layers that we get stuck in affect our ability to see a bigger picture. And that's why I say creativity is the be-all, the end-all. If you can find a creative minute, if you can find some sort of piece inside of you to be open to getting a new idea, then all of your problems will be solved. That's the solution key to everything is being creative, being open. And thinking outside of the box, there's this idea that we need to be out of the box. But what we need to know is what is that box? And maybe can we redefine the box and get into the box? Studies have shown that being creative is actually uh, fostered by having a limit. If you say, I'm only going to be able to use green to make a tree, but I got this green and this green and this green and this green, all these different light and dark values of, of the color to create depth and variety in the tree instead of just, oh, the tree is green and it's got brown and it's got different stuff on it. But if we give ourselves limits, then we're able to think more clearly about what the outcome is we want. This is why we have deadlines. This is why we have a budget. It creates limits so that we have to think within a certain box to get a result. So why do people keep saying you need to think outside of the box? Well, that means outside of that normal expected box. There's no rule saying you can't create your own box and get into a different place. My my son's limits, why we got creative and how to communicate with him, he had those limits. We had some, some structure issues that didn't match what the general population had as the expectations. We had to get creative within a different box. And same with my daughter. Same with all of my clients that I work with. We get to redefine our box. We get to redefine how we frame our world. And that's why we have the frame training. We can help you with that. And we'll talk about that more later. You can sign up at LydiaTaggart.com for that. But today we're going to explore more about this idea of what is your box? Can you change your box? Can you change your frame of reference? And what kind of limits will support you in getting more creative? We have this misconception that artists are just a free spirit. And I think I know why. Because one of those limits is often placed that when you're having a stressful, oh, I've got to figure out this problem, ah, When you stop worrying about it and you give yourself a break, that's where all the ideas come. You think about it, you pull out all your resources, you go, oh, okay, I've got a sock and I've got a hanger and I've got a light bulb. What can I make with these? I I need to solve my problem. These are all my resources. And then you create your box, what you're going to have as your limits, and you go take a shower, go do the dishes, go do something that's not stressing your brain out. And then all the ideas come up because you're you're relaxed and you're able to find them. We're going to explore more about this after the break. I'm so excited you're here with me. and We're going to have a great time with our guest today. He's a good friend. You're listening to TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and this is 
layers of community. Welcome back to TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and you're listening to Layers of Communication. Today, we're, doc- we're talking about the layer of creativity and how being creative can be the solution for any and every problem. I'm going to welcome our guest today, Jesse Mogul. He is a good friend, and he is so creative. I was listening to his story, and he's got a lot of other things happening. And most of his stuff right now, I would say he's he's um, recovering from alcoholism, and he's got a lot of other stuff going on. But what struck me was his creativity, and he is so creative to the core from from birth. I just know that. And so I'm really excited for him to come on and visit with us. How are you today, Jesse? I am awesome. I am so good to be on your show. Thank you again for having me. This wonderful energy, wonderful energy right now. Thank you. So as we were talking before, when we, when we were just being friends, so we met in California at a conference and we had lunch together and I just amazing how awesome you are and you have so much to offer the world. But what I really thought was your biggest quality that stood out to me the most was how creative you are. You've got your podcast and is it called everything is awesome. Everything is interesting. Every, yeah. Everything's interesting with Jesse Mogul because everything truly is interesting. If you just look at it from the right angle. Yes. And, and that right there is creativity being able to change the <laughs> angle that you're looking at it. Um, so how did you come up with that, Jesse? Where did you get your ideas from? Well, when I, it's, a, it's a great little origin story of how I wanted to become a journalist. When I was in third grade, an assignment was given by the teacher to go interview another teacher somewhere in the school and then write it into a story. And I asked, you know, like the 20 questions you'd ask anybody if you're trying to get to, to know them. And then I wrote it out exactly how I asked all the questions, like, what's your name? Where are you from? I turned that in as the assignment with all the questions and then all the answers. And the teacher's like, no, you have to turn it into a story, like the books you always read, because I was a bit of a book nerd, and I didn't didn't quite get that. And so then she explains it to me. I go home, and I rewrite this entire story, and I realize you can meet anyone. You can, I mean, mind you, I'm a third grader, so I don't, it's not like my brain is as advanced as it was when I got to college, but I was fascinated by, by the idea that you could meet anyone, and you could turn their life into a story. And so from, it was, that was it. That was the origin of it all. I, I started believing right then and there that everybody had an amazing story to tell. It just had to be told the right way. I believe everything is interesting if you just tell the story the right way. If you make shovels for a living, there's probably a reason why you chose to make shovels for a, re, a, re, a reason for a living. Like that's, there's a story there. And so if you just tell the story the right way, everything becomes interesting. And it's a philosophy I've believed in since obviously third grade. And when it came time to name my podcast, I was like, I don't know what to, I don't know what to talk about because I find everything interesting. And I was like, wait, that's it. Everything's interesting. And boom. I it love was like it. a light bulb. <laughs> Clear back in third grade. Wow. That is awesome. I really yeah. love that. Yeah. I, I, I came home and told my mom about how much I love doing this story stuff. And I was like, yeah, it's like newspapers. And mind you, they might have a dad. They, they always got newspapers and I sort of kind of cared about them. But from then on out, I was always reading the newspaper. And then there's a, a, a newspaper called USA Today that I think had just started in the 80s. So she got me a subscription to that um, pretty much within that week. And I started reading newspapers from then um, all the way up until I went to college. And then, you know, you're, you're in college. You have college stuff to do. But I, re- I read a newspaper every single day from the time I was in third grade to the time I graduated high school. Oh, fantastic. I know in our school, they have an assignment that you're supposed to read a, a newspaper. And my kids, you know, we read. We're book nerds here, too. And that's probably one of the reasons why we connected so well. But their classmates were like, what's a newspaper, you know, and it's just fascinating that it's an assignment now that they give that you have to read a newspaper. (laughs) (laughs) And here we are just reading. And (laughs) yeah, that is awesome that it's an assignment. It's sad that it has to become that. I mean, to, to me, I always knew that I was learning the more ink I had on my fingers by the end of the session. So, I mean, I was, I would devour uh, the entire newspaper from start to finish. I'd read every single article. I'd cut them out and I'd put them in like little photo albums, you know, those little plastic sticky pages that could peel up and then you put things down and cover it up. 
I had, I mean, I must have had 30 or 40 of these things over the years. I was just obsessed with knowledge. <laughs> Uh, so I think what, one of the things that you're telling me is a key to being creative is curiosity. Absolutely. And, it's one of the most important things that I live my life by. I'm constantly curious. A lot of my friends tell me I have this childlike curiosity and enthusiasm for everything that I do. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it can be very energetic at times. I have to like try to calm myself down, like, take me to a zoo or an amusement park or even to like a science museum or something that most people wouldn't even find interesting, like an old bookstore. And it's like, I'm it's like, I'm eight years old all of a sudden again. It's, it's quite interesting how I do that. Oh, you're not alone. I see that a lot in my family too. And myself, we could spend hours and hours in a bookstore because there's so much to be curious about so many different viewpoints on the same topic, you know, and, uh, being able to see all the different sides and things. Have you had any side effects of this curiosity? Yeah, the number one problem with it is that I tend to hoard information. And it's funny that you asked that coming out of this past weekend because part of my 2018 was starting to release myself from some of the clutter that I had begun to surround myself in my apartment and in my room. And what the number one thing that I tend to hoard onto is magazines and newspapers and anything that is information, that curiosity is, I devour information, but I also start to accumulate it because I'm like, oh, that's, this is good. This is good. I want to read this. I want to read that. I mean, you should see how many things I've got bookmarked on my, on, on my Safari page. It's, it's rather obnoxious <laughs> because of this curiosity uh, one one year in particular, I had accumulated so many newspapers that it was actually became it became dangerous in my room. Like if an earthquake had happened, it would have fallen on my bed and crushed me. Um, oh, so no. yeah, if there is a drawback to this curiosity, it's that if I'm not careful, I will start to accumulate information, and it becomes like off putting. If somebody walks in your room and they see like an entire wall with stacks of newspapers all the way to the ceiling. They're going to think you're weird. <laughs> not not <laughs> cool. They're going to think you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe after the break, we can talk more about what to do about that hoarding issue, what, what you've done to still be creative and curious, but how you've been able to let it go at the same time as gaining and, and this cycle. So we're going to go to a break now. So we are on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. If you want to join us on this conversation, the call-in number is 1-866-451-1451. And we're listening to Layers of Communication. Welcome back to Layers of Communication on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. And today we are talking about creativity. Before the break, we're visiting with Jesse Mogul about how he is so voraciously curious that he was he was collecting and hoarding information. So I want to explore this now, Jesse, what can we do? What have you done to still be creative and collect information, but not let it take over your life and how bad did it get? And what, what have you done about this? Share, share with us. Well, it, it got really bad. I was telling you off air just now, and I feel like the viewers need to, listeners need to completely understand how bad it got. And this was just like four <laughs> or five years ago, but I worked at a hotel that had a LA Times, New York Times, Washington Post, and USA Today, and all every day I took all four home. And so the stack got all the way up the, to the ceiling or until it became unstable, and then I just started to do more stacks next to it. And before you knew it, over the course of a year, a 20-foot-long wall – had newspapers stacked all the way to the ceiling. Uh, and then it took me another year to finally throw them all away because it did get, I mean, it was obnoxious. And so the first thing I had to realize is that the universe brought me the information for a reason. And in most cases, I never even opened these newspapers. So what information was there is beyond me. So I just had to come to grips with the fact that if I need that information again, the universe will bring it back to me. And that, that's the number one way I, that's, that's how I stopped with all of the information hoarding is that the, if, if I need to know it, I mean, the internet exists for a reason. There's libraries. If I need information, I can go find it. The universe will bring it back to me. So this weekend, as I was throwing out a ton of stuff in my house to 
clear out the clutter and to renew that feng shui kind of energy, I just kept thinking, you know, oh, if I need this again, the universe will bring it back to me. And I just start to release things like that instead of holding on out of fear that I'll have to spend money on a new one or that if I ever need it again, it won't be right there waiting for me. I mean, if you haven't touched it in six months or a year, you probably don't need it in your life anymore. Release it out to someone else who does need it and trust that the universe will bring it back whenever it's time. You know, that's so funny that if you haven't touched it in six months or a year, my sister-in-law one year was cleaning out and doing something similar, just getting rid of everything that she didn't need. And we went and had Thanksgiving at their house and she hadn't used her meat cutter for six months. So there was not a knife there that was to cut the turkey and it was hilarious. But we really didn't need it. We found some other way to cut and carve the turkey and... But that was hilarious. She's like, oh, I guess I don't use that except for at Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, you and, know, and that's then, something that uh, – go ahead, please. Sorry. I was just going to say we get creative when we need to. You know, we found another way. And there's and what always were you another say? way. It's, it's, it's there, right? You figured it out. It's a turkey. Yes. I mean, we could have gone caveman and just – picked up the bone, but we didn't have to. <laughs> it's, it's not really a need. And you know, they say creativity. No, that's not the, the saying. The saying is uh, necessity is the mother of all invention, right? And that's based on how to be creative, that you need something. You can't just wake up one day and go, hmm, I think I'll be creative. No, you, you have to have some sort of need to go into that space of, of being creative. Uh, what kind of needs have you found for your curiosity and this voracious appetite? What kind of needs that I've found? It's, there has to be variety in, you know, whether I'm learning or I'm creating, whatever, there, whatever I'm doing, there has to be variety. Hence, the, everything's interesting. So I'm not stuck. You know, there's a lot of podcasts I love to follow, but they'll be about stuff you forgot in the third grade or they'll be about science or they'll be about whatever they're about but they're stuck with that one niche and, and I can't be, I, I, there's too much. I could read about bees and, and, and Monsanto poisons one minute and then be reading about somebody who makes shovels. Uh, I really want to interview somebody who makes shovels for a living. So I reference that frequently. Um, there <laughs> has to be, a, to me, there has to be variety because a creative mind, it, it, it fuels off of variety. Uh, a really cool Mark Twain quote that Anthony Bourdain used the other day on the show I was watching was that, um, like uh, traveling um, is, is like how oh, I now I'm going to butcher it again. I just used it on my Facebook live show, but basically like traveling is the, is the death meal to um, bigotry and closed mindedness. Like if you travel, you absorb all of these other cultures into your mind and you see how everybody else lives. Well, your normal day to day life here in the States can be just as much filled with variety. And once you start to fill your life with variety, you can't help but just grow and expand and start to see everybody's life around you in a totally different way. Yes. Oh, traveling is so amazing. And, you know, in the United States here, we have so much opportunity to travel. And um, even when our kids were little, we packed them into the suburban. I mean, we, we would go places, all eight of us together, and we'd go on to the West Coast, and we'd look at a beach and the rainforest and the desert on the way, and we have so much variety in the people. I remember one time our our brakes went out while we were on vacation, and so we were luckily near a brake shop. Um, we were in Seattle, Washington, and we went into this little you know, we learned, we were creative. If you have a large family, you don't go during rush hour. You don't go during the main lunch time or the main dinner time, right? <laughs> so we yeah. went into this little place and uh, it was about three in the afternoon, maybe four. And it was just kind of just us in there. But all these people were staring at us like, look at all those kids and uh, just the different cultures and it, it was so fun and our kids you know i i valued that so much that i want our kids to be creative and open-minded to other people and other places and different things and you know that really lended well to our homeschooling that there is more than just a textbook 
and so many more ways to learn. And oh, I just, I'm remembering that, that experience with, uh, you know, you kind of expect, a lot of people expect that having six kids, and they were young, like our oldest was maybe six. And so they were all pretty young. And um, just the response of people like, amazed that they actually sat in their chairs and we entertained them we interacted with them to keep them in their chairs you know we we're like let's play tic-tac-toe or whatever kind of thing we could come up and be creative about that kind of problem and there's so many different solutions if we if we think in a different box we can create our own box we're going to take another break. After we come back from the break, I'd like to visit more about what kind of boxes we can create for ourselves to be more creative. You're listening to the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is Layers of Communication. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. Welcome back to the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and this is Layers of Communication. The call-in number, if you're interested in joining this conversation, is one 866 451 one four five one. I want to remind you that you can contact me at lydiataggart.com. My email is lydia at lydiataggart.com. And that's L-Y-D-I-A-T-A-G-G-A-R-T. Today we're visiting with Jesse Mogul about being creative. Before the break, we were just talking about creating our own box and not being out of the box but being out of the expected box and creating our own structure. Jesse, what kind of advice do you have for us in what kind of box can we be creative in? How do we create a new box? I love, I love that question because this entire – going into the end of 2017 and 2018, I was finishing up my first year of sobriety, and it was, I'd really done a lot of work on changing my mindset and creating a whole new world for myself. And I was introduced uh, by my girlfriend to this book by a woman named Carol Dweck called Mindset. And it's all about growth versus fixed mindset. And if you go into things with a, with a growth mindset where you see an opportunity to grow and learn and see things from a different perspective versus a fixed mindset where you're stuck in your ways and you say, no, that can't be done or no, I will not see it a, a different way. My way is the highway. Um, you really limit yourself into how creative and how, how much growth that you can have, not just in whatever, you know, it, it could be at home within your communication. It could be at work in the way that you fit, do your projects. It can, you can use this growth versus fixed mindset in every single aspect of your life. And that's what I've done now. I'm obsessed with this book and, and I'm actually building an entire program out for one of our play shops that we're going to be launching in March where we really dive into why do people hold on to a fixed way of looking at things? Um, because I, I truly do believe, Lydia, that, that change can happen in an instant. You just have to make that choice and that everyone can change. In fact, when people say that people don't change, what they're doing is they're projecting the fact that they don't think they can change or they refuse to change. And I do not believe that. I think that anything about yourself can be changed. You just have to look at it from a different perspective to a different growth mindset window. And through that, you have no choice but to be creative. If you've been locked into this is the way I will cook hamburger helper every single night and I will never try it any other way, that's a fixed mindset. There's a, there's a, a hundred million ways to skin a cat, pardon the old you know euphemism, but it's like it truly is so many different ways of doing everything. And if you just get more creative with it, uh, there's there's enjoyment from be, from growing. There's enjoyment that comes from being creative. Your brain starts to fire in ways that you never knew it could. And th th we had it as children. You know, when you're three, four, five, six years old, the, the littlest thing makes you so excited because you're learning something new and you know you're growing. And then something happens when we become adults. Other adults put their negative mindsets onto us and say, nope, that can't be done. Well, it can't be done because they've never tried to do it. it. It can be done. And a kid will, you tell a kid, no, you can't do that. It's almost like you're telling them, yes, you should go try <laughs> because they <Yeah>. don't listen. <laughs> they, 
they don't, you know, you've got six of them. You tell them, no, oh, yeah. that can't be done. And next thing you know, <laughs> they're all in the living room trying to figure out how to catapult the cat across the fence. Like, don't tell a kid <laughs> something can't be done. They will figure out a way to do it. It may not necessarily be safe, but don't tell them they can't do it. And so why do adults tie themselves down with that fixed mindset? Um, it lacks creativity. It lacks growth. It, 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 honestly, I just everything I do now is focused on: Am I looking at this through the best growth mindset? And if I'm not, I ask, you know, why am I not? How can I be more creative and get myself out of this fixed mindset box and open myself up to this whole world of possibilities? Yes. Well, for the record, we never tell our kids that they can't do anything. <laughs> for that very that is reason. Awesome. There's, can't is like a swear word in our house. If you're caught saying it, then you go to the corner and you're in trouble. You don't say you can't. You can and say it, all sorts of other things about it. Like, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm not sure yet. I'm still looking for the solution. There's so many different ways to not say you can't. And it's, yeah, one of my kids has had a hard word. time with it. But yeah. Um, try try's another horrible word. You know what what does what does yes. try mean? Try is hard. You know, to like put in you know, context. Try to sometimes. lift your leg. You know, <laughs> tell any of your listeners right now. Be like, try to lift your leg. Like, what does that mean? You either lift your leg or you don't lift your leg. There's no try involved. It's. I mean, right. Yoda used to say something like that. Like, if do you, or you do know, not. There is no say, try. Oh. Yep. Right. When people say they'll try, what that tells me is. I don't really want to do it, but I'm going to placate you right now and tell you that I'll try just so you'll leave me the heck alone about it. I can go about my life in my own fixed mindset way. You either just say, no, I don't want to do that, or yes, I do want to do that. That's all you have to say, and don't worry if the other person is upset that you don't want to do it. You have your reasons. If that's the way you want to live your life, then don't do it. But don't lie right, and, and say you'll try when you have no intentions. Well, I think sometimes we think that we're going to try because we're not familiar with that context that you can't really try something. You either do it or you don't. But we we want to do it, but we don't really trust that we can. So we say we're going to try. And it's not really pictured in our own minds as a lie because we, we don't have that context that, you know, you can't pick up your leg. If you're saying you're going to try, you can't try to pick up your leg. You either pick it up or you don't. Um the try is in the effort that you put forward in doing it. So it's not, I, th I think that we, we think we can't do it until we have the result. And we forget that as we're working on it, we are doing it. And it comes down right. to that decision that you said, you know, that, that choice of, do I really want to do this? Am I going to? Am I, can I be creative? I've never tried to be creative. Nobody has ever accused me of being too creative before. I can decide that I'm going to be creative <laughs> and I am creative and then let that become a part of who I am, that decision. That's a great, that's a great mentality to take into it. I've recently decided that I want to learn the guitar because my roommate is a musician. He's a leader, lead singer of a band. He knows how to play the guitar so I've been going through the chord pr progression and like you never fully learn the guitar. Eric Clapton will still tell you today, he doesn't fully know how to play the guitar. He's constantly learning. And so if you go into it with that creative growth mindset that I'm going to learn the guitar, it's like, well, I'll try to learn it. Well, hold it in your hand, learn E or A or G, you're learning the guitar. Yes, you may not know how to play a song, but you are already learning. Like it's already happening. So just flip that and you say I'm going to learn to cook you may only learn how to slice an onion today but you're learning like you are now cooking you are officially a cook because you know how to slice an onion and put it into a saute pan it's you know people look at the destination as being oh now I know how to cook the journey says that you already know how to cook it's just how much more can you learn it's those expectations and limits that we put on us that you know we decide how to judge that. But we're going to go to a break. When we come back, we'll talk more about judging our creative limits. This is BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and we are on Layers of Communication. 
Welcome back to the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and this is Layers of Communication. Today, we're visiting with Jesse Mogul about creativity. Uh, we want to talk now about the creative box, creating our new box, not having those limits and, the, and what expectations we can have or eliminate. Jesse, what are your thoughts on this? Um, you know, the, the key to, to, to me, in my opinion, the key of sneak, getting outside of that box and, and opening and expanding yourself to all of the possibilities out there is just going into all of these opportunities for creativity, knowing that you can grow, going into it with a growth mindset, that it's, it's, it's all possible if you just are willing to put forth effort. And it doesn't have to be a ton. When I talk about quitting your job and, and moving to the top of a mountain and only focusing on this one particular, I want to learn how to paint and moving to a painting commune and never doing anything else. Like just decide that you want to do something, whatever it might be, and that your brain will immediately start to figure out ways to achieve that. It's, it's very, it's a, it's, our brain is a very powerful tool. If we say we want to figure out a way to cook hamburger with onions. Our brain will figure that out for us. We just have to be willing to, see all of the different ways and not go into it with such a expectation kind of mindset where if it doesn't look exactly the way it did in the magazine, we failed. That's expectations Mm -hmm. lead to suffering. I I think when people put so much weight on the destination and I do this, this is why I feel like I can speak very confidently about this. I am a destination driven person and I'm spending every single day trying to enjoy the journey more. And I really think that that's the first box to get yourself out of is don't have all these expectations for the destination. Enjoy the journey. The journey starts the moment you decide it starts and enjoy the heck out of it. Because when you get to the destination, it may not look exactly the way you thought it would. And now you'll be disappointed. But why would you be disappointed? You just did all that work (laughs) to get there. And, you know, but if you were so busy going 110 down the highway trying to get to Yosemite, then you didn't see all of the beautiful views that were along the highway getting you there. And now you just get to Yosemite and all that other opportunity for creativity and growth was passed by because you could not stop thinking about the redwood trees. Right. I had this comment with my son just this morning, uh, paying attention, right? Pay attention. We want people to listen to us, talk to them, pay attention to me, but we just say pay attention. And if we're, we're destination driven, like you say, we, that's the outcome we want. We want them to listen to us, but really they're paying attention to something else. And so I saw my son not getting ready for school. He was going to be late. And I was like, pay attention. I caught myself. I was like, to this, pay attention to this. Don't be looking out the window. (laughs) He's, we've had a chicken that keeps escaping the coop. And so he's, he's worried about our chicken being left out. Um, because she, she gets out and then she's like, oh, it's cold and there's snow and I don't have anywhere to go and there's no grass to eat or anything and no bugs. And she just stands there shivering on the outside of the coop. And inside the coop, is there's a heat lamp and whatever. So he's paying attention very intently on something else. And what we want is to pay attention to our plan and is that box. I mean, he's in a different box. And being able to enjoy the journey along the way and be able to look out the window and go, oh, okay, Chuckalina is okay. She's still in the coop. Let's move on and keep going to school. And so I think that's that's a beautiful description, a destination-driven person. We, we want to be focused on our goals. We want to have the outcome. But sometimes it's a good thing to see everything else along the way. I would say every time it's a good thing to notice the things along the way. Um, Jesse, we're getting to the, yeah, we're getting to the near end of our time together. Before we get to the end, I want to make sure you have time for inviting people to continue this conversation with you. And you have so much to offer. We didn't even touch base on hardly any of your awesomeness, but where can people find you? (laughs) Uh, definitely Facebook's always a good place to start. You can just uh, search for media mogul. That's the word media. My last name, mogul, M O G L E. That's my Facebook fan page. You can find me on iTunes. Everything's interesting with Jesse mogul. My website is media Hence the Facebook URL media mogul. 
Um, I'm on all social media platforms under Jesse Mogul because I'm the only one on the planet. I think that's hilarious that I can actually say that. But if you Google the name <laughs> Jesse M O G L E Mogul, I am literally the only one on the planet, which did not serve me well in college when I got into trouble with the law, but it serves me very well <laughs> now that I don't get in trouble. Um, because if you search me, I'm the only one. Um, but yeah, everything's interesting with Jesse Mogul. In fact, I launched uh, season two of the podcast today, and you. Uh, I lined it up where I was the very first, you are the, the pilot, the inaugural episode of season two that launched Woo-hoo! today. So if people want to hear more, more of, of Lydia Taggart and later as a communication, we had an excellent hour on the microphone not too long ago. And so you are the very first episode. I, I made sure I lined it up with this interview. So if anybody goes on iTunes and searches for everything's interesting with Jesse Mogul, they will find you. You've got a little webpage action going on over at mediamogul.com. So I'd love to continue this conversation with anyone. We've got, I do workshops and mindset mentoring and uh, I live in Hollywood, California. So needless to say, I have an abundance of ways of exposing myself to the creative the creativity all around me daily. That's so phenomenal. I am so excited. I did love our conversation. I love having you here. I loved being on your podcast. I just love everything about everything. (laughs) Everything is interesting. It's perfect. So um, one more tip about communicate or creativity. Just before we go, Jesse, what's the last thing you want to leave with our audience today? The most important thing that you can do to make sure that you stay happy is to continuously push yourself to grow and learn and be creative, whatever that looks like to you, whatever, whatever field, whatever journey, whatever genre, whatever it is, it's just listening to music every day that you, that you absolutely love, but whatever it is, try to wake up every morning and think, how can I be a better version of myself tonight when I get back into bed? And then as you're going to bed, ask yourself, what did I do to make myself a better version of myself? today telling you if you if you think about that if you think about truly how can i grow every single day it will change your outlook on life you will see things from a completely different perspective if you just strive for a growth mindset it will lead to a creative life outside of that box that you don't want to be in anymore thank you so much jesse we're going to take that break now and thank you for being with us I just can't say thank you enough. I love our conversations and I hope we can visit again soon. Absolutely. This is Lydia. Anytime. I love it too. Thank you. This is Layers of Communication on TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart. Stay Welcome back to Layers of Communication. I'm your host, Lydia Taggart, and you're listening to TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. Today, the layer we've been dissecting and taking apart is creativity. Creativity, as Jesse mentioned earlier, is just key to all things happy. If we can continue to look for ways to grow and say, how did I grow today? How can I grow more tomorrow? That mindset, being able to know that we're just growing, we're practicing, and I will add also, remember you're human. We're all human. We make mistakes and we can learn and grow from them. They don't have to be like the end of our happiness. We can move on and progress. And that is the key to happiness, being able to see things in a different angle and just be curious of what else could this mean. And uh, one of the things that I want to share with you are a few ways that we can have creativity in our lives more. If you don't feel like you're a very creative person, like Jesse mentioned just before we ended the last segment, he said, listening to music. If you have music in your life, there is a creative component to your life. Flick on the radio, choose something. You don't have to sing or play an instrument. Those things are creative. But if you have music in your life, then you have something creative in your life. It can be art. You can hang a piece of painting, a piece of artwork, a painting on your wall. You don't have to be the one to create it. You can just invite that creativity into your life and have it in a place where you can appreciate it. Things like this. It can be simple little baby steps because I know for a majority of the adults out here, we have a hard time believing that we can be creative or even 
believing that it's worth having creativity in our lives. Like I think that you can see now after this conversation that we've had with Jesse, creativity is really awesome and it is important to have in our lives. It It's just really, really a beneficial, found, I would say foundational part to having a happy life, being able to be creative and have creativity in our lives. So I want to remind you that we have the frame training on LydiaTaggart.com. It helps us to be able to change our frames and how we create communication and interact with other people. Um, Jesse is found at MediaMogul.com and on iTunes. His Everything Interesting. I am his guest on his podcast today. I'm so honored to be the first one for this season. How awesome is that? So we, we have a lot of things there. And you can find me, of course, at LydiaTaggart.com. Thank you so much for being with us today. Next week, we are going to be visiting with Candice, and I'm not sure how to say her name. I have to ask her again. Friesian? I'm going to ask her when I talk to her again. But we're going to be talking about money and how money influences our communication, our beliefs about money. So today, I'm going to just leave you with this reminder that you are worth it. You are more than you know, and so are they. See you next week. You've been listening to Layers of Communication with your host, Lydia Taggart. Tune in next week as we break through the layers in order to communicate and connect down to your core on Lydia Taggart's Layers of Communication.